I'm gonna show you every single snake that's in the Serpentarium today. Look at that beautiful cookies and cream coloration. This snake is like a beautiful set of yellows and light greens. Woo, 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 don't bite me. Look how big this one is. Woo, hoo, look how big this little baby is. And so pretty, I could kiss you. Striping by her tail and striping by her neck, like this guy over here. But this guy's got no diamonds at all. Isn't that crazy? Tag it, make a meal out of it. But notice how laid back this snake is. The snake wants nothing to do with me. And their venom's so nasty, if you get bit, the venom's gonna make you bleed out your butt and then your heart's gonna burst. Ooh! Look at that, see that O? 15 feet long, look how big he is. Look, that's a monster-sized venomous snake. This is the inland Taipan. This is drop for drop the most venomous snake on the planet. Let's see, Ooh. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. What are you doing? Can I get you? Ooh. Snapper, I didn't see you there sneaking up on me. Uh, what, what was I doing? Uh, don't, don't ask me about my personal time like that. I, I'm just hanging out with my snakes. Anyways, what's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out in the Serpentarium. As you can see, I'm surrounded by venomous reptiles from around the world and some non-venomous reptiles. And I've been thinking about giving a full room tour. You guys are always wondering, like, what's in that cage? What's that over there? I haven't seen this snake in a while. I'm going to show you every single snake that's in the Serpentarium today. So we're going to start all the way on this side, change it up a bit, because we changed up the room a little bit. And I'm going to start right here with the Chinese sharp-nosed viper. This snake right here is a beautiful pit viper that's found in China, Taiwan, and Vietnam. And this snake is also known as the 100 pacer viper. Ooh, see, it's targeting me right now. They have super acute heat-seeking pits, which make them a deadly accurate striker. And they're so good at striking and so fast at striking, they can actually propel their body outwards and actually get a good launch where they tag you right on the finger from the back of the enclosure outside like this way. People have been bit using tools like this, trying to handle these snakes. And even with two hooks in the hands, the snake shoots out and bites them on the index finger. So even with the tools, this snake is extremely dangerous. They also call it the 100 pacer viper because if you get bit, you only have 100 steps left. That's a nasty bite, but it's a beautiful snake and a great educational ambassador here at the facility. Now, right down here, we don't have any snakes, but we have my gorgeous pair of lace monitors from Australia. They're the second largest lizards in Australia, and they get over six and a half feet long. They are beasts, and I love them to death. These are my second favorite lizards on the planet. First favorite are Parentes from Australia. Right here is the smallest rattlesnake on the planet. We've got to make a snake hunting video going out looking for these beauties because they are all over the place here in South Florida. This is the smallest rattlesnake on the planet, the pygmy rattler, also known as the ground rattler because the only way to hear them rattle because they're so small is to actually get your ear real close to the ground. But obviously, that's a dangerous move with a snake like this. You get too close, you get a tag, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Most of the time, it wouldn't kill you unless you're allergic to the venom, but I'll tell you what, it'll be the worst pain of your life. Do you guys wanna see the snake's rattle, how small this rattle is? I'm just gonna open this up real quick, and we're gonna take a look at that tiny little rattle and see if we can get the snake to show off that beautiful full-formed rattle. Because even though, even though this snake is very small, it's got a full-fledged rattle going on right now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're gonna try and bounce this snake out. Look at that tail. Ooh, 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 ooh. You can hear that, can you hear it? Zzz. Right there, see the rattle? That is the rattle of the pygmy rattlesnake. We're not gonna upset them too much because a little rattler like that is very hard to keep on the snake hook. And these snakes are like fine china. You don't wanna hurt them, you don't wanna bruise their ribs. So let's lock this enclosure. Nice and secure, good to go. Let's move on to the next snakes. Let's bring the hooks just in case. Right here, ooh, this snake is kinda hiding. You can see it's right about there. That is called a Uricoan rattlesnake. And I think we're gonna have to open up this enclosure to see this beauty. So let's do it. I'm gonna open this up real quick and we're gonna see this beautiful snake up close. All right, so this snake is the Uricoan rattlesnake endemic to Venezuela. We gotta give it its distance because this snake has been known to strike out right about here. So we're just gonna gently take this little snake hook and scoop the snake out comfortably. 
Look at this. Ooh, this is the cookies and cream rattlesnake. I love this rattler. Literally raised this rattlesnake up from a little baby about two years ago, and it's still very, very young. This snake can actually get around four, five feet long. Look at that beautiful cookies and cream coloration. They are only found in Venezuela out in the dry fields where the cows are at. They love to live in little burrows. All right, we're gonna put him back. You see he was just sleeping. We don't wanna upset him. Just like that, gonna take that snake pick and uh, take it right out of there. Why do I call it a snake pick? Because you see a snake and you pick it up. Simple as that. All right, I'm gonna close this up. Make sure it's nice and secure. Let's get that secure. There we go. Get that lock going on. Oh, look, he's getting in defensive position. Not too happy right now. That is a beautiful pit viper right there. What's really cool about rattlesnakes is they give live birth. So when they mate and they're ready to drop their babies, which is called gravid, when a snake or any reptile is pregnant, when they drop those babies, they're live birth. That is just too cool. All right, let's take these snake hooks over here. All right, these are really cool. These guys are super common in places like Costa Rica, Nicaragua, basic, basically throughout Central America, and they are called eyelash vipers. Eyelash vipers come in so many different colors, red, orange, yellow, uh, silver. There are so many different color combinations with these snakes, it is insane. And there are three snakes in here. We got the beautiful gold one. We have the two Christmas phases, which look like moss, which help them camouflage so they can sneak up on anoles and frogs, which are their favorite foods. All right, let's see, where, where, where? I think we got one hiding in the back. We got one hiding right here, one little Christmas phase right here. I don't wanna bug him too much, but you can see that beautiful little mossy colored eyelash viper right there. We're gonna put that one back. I'm gonna show you this big, beautiful gold one hiding. Let's see if we can get this one to come out. Hey, what are you doing? Can I, can I use my snake pick on you to pick you up, huh? I guess not, but you can check him out. He's right there hanging out. Beautiful gold eyelash viper. He's in such a tight little crevice. I don't want to try and pull him out, but that's my beautiful gold eyelash viper. Been raising that one for about a year plus now. And they can actually get roughly around like two plus feet long. Not a really big viper, but one of those beautiful vipers out there, like living artwork. All right. Good to go. We're gonna put the lock on that enclosure so we can move on to the next snake. Let's see. We've already done three, four, five, six snakes already. And that's just a little area right here. Next is Senor Pepe, my favorite, my favorite Mexicano right here. This is a beautiful Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. And he's a beast of a snake. I think I'll just let him be in the enclosure because you guys can get a pretty good look at him right now. He's actually going through sheds, so his colors are a bit dull, but this snake is like a beautiful set of yellows and light greens. I love this snake to death. And they can actually get upwards of six feet long, and I've seen them as fat as my thigh. This snake's pretty big, but not as fat as my thigh. And then these snakes right here, take a look at this. I won't really open this enclosure up. I don't want to disturb them too much. These are my puff adders. They're from Africa. They're in the same family as gaboon vipers, which have the world's longest fangs. And also it's the family of some of the fastest striking snakes on the planet, but they aren't the fastest striking snake on the planet. We do have that snake here on display, which we'll show you in a second. Let's move on. Oof, this is a beautiful snake. Look at this. This is an Arizona black rattler. And this snake, I didn't really plan to get. I went over to a biologist's house and he had white speckled rattlesnakes a long time ago. And when I went over there to look at him, he showed me this beautiful rattlesnake. And he said, you want one of these? And I said, I, I can't say no, obviously. Look at this. It's got gold on black. And then when I take it out of the enclosure, you can see that it's got like purples on the sides. It's such a gorgeous looking rattlesnake. And they get like five feet long. So he's got more growing to do. Oh. These snakes right here, not venomous, but a classic. These guys are the biggest, heaviest snakes on the planet. These are non-venomous constrictors. These are the green anacondas, the heaviest snakes on the planet. And these guys are so beautiful. Look at that, they eat capybaras, the world's largest rodent. They eat caiman, one of the smaller crocodilians on the planet. And they are just beautiful. They have tiny little beaded eyes, which allow them to sneak up on their prey in the water. They're great ambush predators. So you can have an 18 foot green anaconda hiding in the muck with nothing but its little beaded eyes sticking out. All right, we're gonna put this snake right back in the enclosure. There you go. There's another one right back there. This one's actually a bit bigger. Look at this one. Woo, 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 don't bite me. Look how big this one is. Woo, woo, look at 
look how big this little baby is. I'm so pretty. I could kiss you. I love you. Go right back to swimming, my friend. All right, we're going to close this up. Make sure it's nice and secure. We don't want any, any issues with the wildlife out here. We got to make sure everything's secure. All right, got my snake picks ready to go. Next up, I'll probably have to open this up just to bring them a little bit closer to the glass because they're, they're so hidden inside their enclosure. They're way back in there. These guys are really bitey. They're not laid back at all. These are South American rattlesnakes. And what's really cool about these snakes is that these two are actually from the same parents, but they look completely different. So we've got this one. we got this beautiful one, completely striped. Let's see if we can get the snake out actually without putting ourselves at risk with this other one in the back. Ooh, gotta be real careful. I would not want to take a tag off of this snake because their venom is not like normal rattlesnake venom. They have the hemotoxins. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. They have the hemotoxins like your typical viper, woo, woo, woo. but they also have neurotoxic venom like a cobra. So it's a very dangerous concoction of venom. Look at him, he's super heated right now. And he's got those heat seeking pits right at the front of the face. So he's paying attention to anything with heat. The handle of the snake hook was being held by my warm hand. So he's focused on that. He's looking at my buddy Stone's feet right now. Shout out to Stone for filming today. Thank you so much. Can I get to see you? <laughs> Anyways, let me get out this other rattler so you can see the big difference. So look at this. This beautiful little lady is the sibling to this male right here. And she's got gorgeous looking diamonds going down her back. But then she has striping by her tail and striping by her neck, like this guy over here. But this guy's got no diamonds at all. Isn't that crazy? And look at this, he's so focused right now on me. You can just see a big fireball of heat. And it's very intimidating to the snake, because look at him, he's only a couple inches off the ground and I'm nearly six feet tall. So for a little rattlesnake, it's very intimidating to be walked up on by a big monkey man like me. Now let's put these snakes back, because we still have a lot more to look at. Let's get that snake right in there. Gotta be real careful, not forget about this one right in between my legs. There we go. This snake is on fire. This is a great snake to show to people for a typical defensive posture. Look at that. He's got great posture. Let's get him right in there. Nice and easy. That is not a snake you don't want to play any games with because that snake will strike out and bite you and then you're dealing with hemotoxic venom and neurotoxic venom shuts down your nervous system it's hard to breathe after that not really good all right down here sadly we're not going to be messing around with this snake this is alice in the black mamba i don't think you'll even be able to see her she's hiding in her box right now and this snake is 10 feet long black mamba going through shed right now so it's milky and eyes She's not gonna be able to see. We don't wanna mess up her shedding process, so we'll leave her alone. But something we will take out is this snake right here. This is the fastest striking snake on the planet. This is the Australian Death Adder. This snake, it's not really aggressive. It's actually pretty laid back. Not to say that you should just walk up to these snakes in the wild and mess with them, because they are in the top 10 most toxic snakes on the planet. They're actually in the same family as cobras, mambas, and crates. They're not in the family of vipers. Even though it's called an adder, and it almost looks like a viper, this is not a viper at all. This is actually a short, fixed, fanged alapid, which means it's related to mambas and cobras. And I want to show you guys how laid back this snake actually really is. I'll show you some really cool features on this snake. Check this out. I'm just going to grab that tail real quick. Look at this. Look at that snake, just hanging out, not making a big fuss. But look at this, look at the tip of the tail right here. Do you see that? That tail has a modified lure that looks like a grub. And this snake will wiggle that tail so it can actually lure in something like a skink. Whoop! something like a skink. Nice and easy. Like a skink, bring it right close to its face, tag it, make a meal out of it. But notice how laid back this snake is. This snake wants nothing to do with me. Just wants to go right back into its enclosure. Just like that. Ooh, can I spin you around. There you go. Look at that tail. Modified to look like a grub. And I'll show you a little clip, check this out. Luring that tail, look at that. Luring that tail to bring in a skink. But uh, here in captivity, we're just feeding mice. Look at that, locked, secured, good to go. Common death adder, Sydney locale, beautiful red rock coloration. You guys ready for the next snake? This is another Aussie favorite. This, oh, I don't even have to take him out. He's right here. Meatball, what are you doing? Meatball is a Colette snake from Australia. 
They come from the heart of Queensland, Australia, and they're only found there. So they're endemic species and you won't find them anywhere else on the planet. And they get roughly around six, seven feet long. And they're also one of the most venomous snakes on the planet. I believe they're in the top 20 most venomous snakes on the planet, but he's beautiful. He's not too cranky either. He's actually a pretty good snake. Now, next snake is actually right out here. This is Bushmaster. I got COVID tested, I'm good. This is the Bushmaster. The South American Bushmaster is the largest viper on our planet. They get literally 12 feet long. That is a beast of a viper. And they'll be found in places like South America. You can find them in Southern Peru, Brazil, places like that. And there are multiple species of Bushmaster. This one's a South American, but there's also the black-headed Bushmaster with a beautiful black head, which hopefully we'll have in the clutch in the future. Now this next snake, this next snake is from Africa. And the African snakes are typically the most defensive snakes. And I will be taking this snake out, so everyone be on their toes, because this snake is not laid back. This snake reminds me a lot of King Tut, my Egyptian cobra, because this is an Ethiopian cobra. And Ethiopian cobras are basically Egyptians that are really pretty from Ethiopia. And this snake, when it wakes up, it comes out on fire. Let's see, woo! It comes, woo, 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 woo. What are you doing? Did I get you? Woo! Can I get you to come out a little bit? Oh, okay, okay, just don't pass that line. Said, okay, okay. This snake is so beautiful. And it's actually one of the snakes that I was considering rehoming, but I don't think I'll do that because it is so beautiful. I mean, I don't think I'll get another opportunity to have a beautiful Ethiopian cobra like this. Look at that. Beautiful hood, gorgeous colorations, and quite the posture. Gotta be real careful, because when he wraps around my hand like this, he'll come flying back. At the end of the day, notice this snake, even though it's so defensive, it just wants to get away. It's gonna go right back in its enclosure. Or not, it's gonna go behind the enclosure. There we go, Alex. There we go, night, right into the enclosure, perfect. Good snake, just like we trained. Just kidding, I didn't train that snake. All right, we're good to go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax, relax, we're good. Secure, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're done, we're done, we're done. All right, next snakes, yellow anacondas. We have three yellow anacondas, so we're just gonna show you the biggest one, which is right here. This is my beautiful female, and she's just, she's so beautiful. Believe it or not, this yellow anaconda can get much larger. They don't get as big as their cousins, the green anaconda, but the yellow anaconda can get 14 feet long if they're females, and they give live birth. So imagine like 100 yellow baby anacondas all over the place, it's insane. This snake up here, this snake is actually going to shed. And I don't want to mess with this snake too much, but you're not able to see it at all right now. So I think I'll just use the snake hook to pull it out a little bit. This snake is the longest true cobra on the planet. Sorry, Kevin. Kevin's a king cobra. He's the longest venomous snake on the planet. But this is the true longest cobra on the planet because this is in the actual cobra family, which they call Naya. Look at that. Woo! This is a forced cobra a beautiful West African forest cobra, and they can get over nine feet long. Beast of a snake. Look at that beautiful animal. But she's going through shed, and I don't really want to bug her too much. She's a beautiful snake. Maybe one day you guys can join us on a future episode. We'll check her out again. Let's see, let me get this locked and secure. Good to go. All right, guys, I, I wasn't gonna be taking out the Bushmaster, but I was actually messing with the glass to get fresh water and I dropped the glass and it broke everywhere. So we're gonna have to take the Bushmaster out and secure it in a box. So what I'll do is I'll just scoop her up real quick. And this gives you guys the opportunity to actually get a good look at her. Look at her, she's a beast. Let's get her away from this glass. Look at her, Bushmaster. She is a beast of a viper, look at this. I've been raising her up since she was a little worm. This snake is so beautiful. What's really cool about these snakes is that their scales feel like a pineapple surface. They're rough and the scales protrude. And also the tip of the tail has a modified thorn on it. It's really, really, really tiny right now, but it actually grows into a quite a large thorn. All right, we're gonna take her and put her into the box because I have to figure out a new enclosure for her now. But you can see she is a little beast of a Bushmaster. Let's get that tail right in there. Ooh, ooh, come on, baby. And notice I am doing a little bit of free handling with her. She's not too bad when it comes to temper, but you have to watch out because she is a heat seeking pit viper. All right, so this next animal, it's not a venomous snake, but I gotta show you because it is a venomous reptile. This is my gorgeous, what are you doing? 
This is my gorgeous, oh, so upset. This is my gorgeous Northern Banded Gila Monster. This lizard is a venomous lizard found in the Western United States, and they are just adorable. But they pack a nasty, nasty punch. They have venom, and they have venom glands. Not here, it looks like they got venom glands right here with these big humps on the back. But this is actually where the venom is stored, the bottom jaw, those thick glands on the side hide the venom of the heel monster. It won't kill you, but if you get bit by one of these guys, it's gonna make you wanna die. It's nasty stuff, like the worst hangover you ever had in your life. But this is my little buddy. And did you just poop on me? What was that? No, it's just a piece of bark. Good, oh good here. I love you, I love you so much. I'll let you go back to sleep. He is a nocturnal lizard, so he wants to be left alone right now. Oh, I see his girlfriend's coming out. She's thinking she's getting some food. Let's close this before she comes out, because she's crazy. Oh, oh, where's the lock? Where's the lock? Secure. Kevin, enough out of you. That's Kevin the King Cobra. We'll get to him in a second. Right here, we have the beautiful Tarsiopella, which means velvet. And this snake is more known for the name Fur de Lance. This snake will make you dance if you work with it. This snake literally gets around eight feet long and it's the most responsible for bites in Latin America. It's a nasty bite too. The director of Naked and Afraid and Bear Grylls was out in Costa Rica, got bit on the top of his foot and his foot literally rotted off. And you guys can actually Google that if you want to see some nasty images. But that's a beautiful snake. It's going to make, make an amazing educational ambassador here at the facility. And I can't wait for it to be around eight feet long, a beast. This is my green tree monitor, Gamora. She's not a venomous reptile, so we're just going to move on. Some monitors are known to have residual venom, some tree monitors, but uh, I think you guys are more so looking for the king cobras today. So let's move on to the next snake, which is actually a king brown. This is a pygmy king brown, also known as a pygmy mulga or a dwarf mulga. And this snake is just a miniature version of the monstrous king brown from Australia. And this snake is also, ooh, there it goes, is also from Australia. You gotta be careful because this snake will literally just fly out if you touch it wrong. What are you doing? Woo hoo hoo, did you see that? Come here. Look at this beautiful miniature king brown from Australia. That is an amazing snake with a very powerful woo -hoo -hoo, neurotoxic venom. And they call these snakes mulga snakes too because there's a bush out in Australia called a mulga. And when it starts to get old, it cracks and creates little crevices for lizards, birds, and snakes to hide. So there's a lot of different wildlife named after the mulga bush. Look at that beautiful snake. And this is actually full grown. Usually a king brown, a normal king brown, will get like eight feet long. And these guys only get around four feet long, but they're still just as venomous. And they're no joke. You gotta take them super seriously. Woo, right back into the cage. Woo, let's close that. That snake is on fire. You gotta love the Australian snakes. Hello, Justina. The king cobras just want all the attention today. All right, next, we're gonna be checking out the little Indian cobra. This is my male Indian cobra. I've actually got two of them. And I think both of them are actually going through shed right now. So I think I'll just flip, I think I'll just flip that hide and show you guys what he looks like. There we go. Oh, he's actually not going through shit right now. He looks actually pretty good. Let's see, maybe I can flip that over. I'll pull this snake out, give it a better look. This guy's very wiry, so we gotta be careful. Oh, oh, oh. it's okay, it's okay, relax. But it's a beautiful, look at that. That's, oh, look at that, the back of the hood. That's why they call it a spectacle cover as well, because it looks like a pair of spectacles, also known as glasses. And this snake, whoo loves to reverse on itself. But look how beautiful this animal is. Brown, tan, with white speculation breaking through. If uh, you guys will get a second to see it not moving, <laughs> you'll be able to see how beautiful that snake is. But this animal is all over the place. Ooh, and very cranky. So what I'll do is fix the hide. Fix his hide. Don't go wrapping around stuff. The only one who can wrap around here is me. I'm the wrapper. Whoa, all right. Let's, oh, okay, I hear you. Go back to sleep. It's all good. It's all good and hood, I understand. You want to go back to bed. We're going to close that up. Woo, relax, relax. Cranky little snake. Indian cobras in the top four most responsible for bites in India. What are you doing? Let's see. And down here is another yellow anaconda. I'm just going to move on because we've already talked about the yellow anacondas. And, woo, 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 and I got plenty. All right. Next, ooh, the king cobras. The most magnificent venomous reptiles. One of the most magnificent animals on the planet. This is Justina. She's a female Indonesian king cobra. And she's around 12, 13 feet long. She's a beast. But the females don't get nearly as big as the male. So we're gonna show you a male right now. His name is Kevin the king cobra. And he might be one of the most famous 
snakes on the internet right now because everyone loves Kevin. I got him probably three plus years ago and he's always been such a beast of an animal. I love him to death. He's so beautiful. He's what you call a Malaysian King Cobra because this locality comes from Malaysia. They're the most beautiful of all the different localities you can find. And notice I'm pretty chill with him, but that's only because I've known him for such a long time and I know his body language very well. But this is a snake to be taken seriously. They can be real, real dangerous. They have one of the largest venom yields of any venomous reptile on the planet, and they have enough venom to take out a bull elephant, so they're no joke. But check this out, he is literally 14, 15 feet long. Look how big he is. Look, that's a monster-sized venomous snake, and I love him to death. And he eats other snakes, which makes him the king of all the snakes, because if you let every snake in this room loose on the floor, and you put Kevin in the room, he would try to eat every snake in the room. He is a snake eater, a reptile eater. They'll even eat monitor lizards, which is insane because monitor lizards have such tough skin. So those big fangs puncture right through that skin, that venom takes over and they eat them up like nothing. They also eat the world's longest snake, the reticulated python, because these guys are found throughout Asia and so are the retics. All right, we're gonna let Kevin go back into his enclosure. Oh, that's okay, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Get in there, you big smug. Fix his mulch a little bit. And you can see he's not too bad, but I would never try to handle Justina, my female King Cobra, the way that I handle Kevin. Because their, person their personalities are obviously very different. And what's really cool is with all this space that we've got in this room, we're gonna be able to do walk-in King Cobra enclosures for my beautiful King Cobras. Not walk in for you guys, but for me to walk in and bring these animals up to the glass and present them to my guests. To you, if you end up coming out. Oh, oh. Okay, we'll move on. We don't want them to keep in the glass like that. We want them to hurt themselves, locked and secure. Sorry, Justina. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please don't think. All right. Right down here, we have Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnakes. These are the largest rattlesnakes on the planet. They get over eight feet long. They're beasts of snakes. Uh, we're just gonna move on because I don't wanna mess with them too much. They had food not too long ago. We've got a gorgeous Indian cobra in here as well, but I don't wanna mess with this one because this one's actually deep, deep in shed. And it's a very beautiful snake as you can see. Up here, we have the Russell's Viper. This is also in the top four most responsible for bites throughout India. In India, there are over 50,000 bites every year from snakes. And a lot of them go untreated. Be people become amputees or they just simply die because these snakes are just so powerful with their venom. Mamma mia. Speaking of powerful venom, now we're getting to some real heavy hitters. We have the Gaboon Vipers with the longest fangs of any venomous reptile on the planet. They literally get over two inches long. That's a big fang. And their venom's so nasty, if you get bit, the venom's gonna make you bleed out your butt and then your heart's gonna burst. It's nasty. They have what's called a cardiotoxin that literally attacks your heart. Nothing more dangerous than that. Up here, whoo, I don't know where they are. Looks like I'm gonna have to pull one out. These are green mambas. Oh my goodness, I'm so silly. Guys, I totally forgot. Let's go here real quick. I forgot to tell you, I have a young black mama named Kobe Dinkleman. Look right here. Let's see if we can get him down. What are you doing? He's right here. Can you see his face? Look at that. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing, dude? This is a beautiful black mamba. He's like four feet long and he's a little beauty. He's going to be the boyfriend of Allison, the black mamba. And uh, he's just not big enough right now. He's just too small. He might become a snack if I put him in there too early. So we're just going to raise him up separate. And then when he's big enough, he'll be with Allison, the black mamba, and a big, beautiful display. Anyways, back to the green mambas. So the green mambas are very toxic when it comes to their venom. But they're not as toxic as the black mamba. They're also not as nutty as the black mamba to handle. But honestly, these guys are pretty nutty. Not going to lie. These guys can be pretty, pretty crazy to handle. So I'm just gonna try to take out one of these snakes safely so I can show you guys the beauty of the green mamba. Oh, and they're both on the move. Okay, let's try and be real careful with this. We don't want any mistakes. Oh, 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 oh. come here, what are you doing? Nice and easy. Oh, 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 got caught in the stick. I don't want you to get hurt. Watch out, watch out for the stick. 
Ooh, ooh, watch out for the stick. There we go. Beautiful, ooh, beautiful green mamba. Look how gorgeous that snake is. And they actually have like a little bit of a bluish hue as they get older, the Eastern green mambas. And they have this beautiful yellow speculation going down their green. This snake will literally get seven. Ooh, 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 gotta be careful. Don't want them riding up the hook to my hand. These guys will literally, ooh, 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 be careful, come on. These guys will literally get like seven, eight feet long. So these are gonna be beautiful neon green snakes to have on display in the snake house. I've actually got a pair in here. So that's something to look forward to in the future, breeding green mambas. I'm gonna put that hide back. I'll have to fix up some of these enclosures after the video, that's fine. We'll come back to this later. I'm gonna close this up, make sure it's nice and secure. I'm trying not to drop the glass this time. <laughs> there we go, nice, oh! Push that glass, there we go. Now it's nice and secure. Let's see, down here we have, this is a heavy hitter. This is King Tut. King Tut is an Egyptian cobra, the same snake believed to be used by Cleopatra for suicide. Now, I wasn't there, so I don't know for sure, but that's the rumor. This snake is the second longest cobra in Africa, and it definitely deserves that name, that title, because they're monstrous, and this snake, this guy's a baby. Look how big he is. Woo -hoo -hoo. His parents were so big that the inspector for that facility thought that his parents were king cobras. This is King Tut, the Egyptian cobra. He is a beautiful beast. And look at that, he's got like teardrops right underneath his eyes. All right, we don't wanna mess with him too much. We're gonna let him do his thing right back inside his enclosure. Put his head right down real quick. Oh, watch your head, there you go. We're gonna make sure he's locked and secure. We're good to go. We're gonna keep on moving. Right down here, we have the plain black snake. I'll just, uh, we'll see where the snake's at. It's pretty wiry and also going through shed. So I don't wanna mess with the snake too much, but this snake, Remember we just saw the King Brown, we saw the Colette snake. Those snakes are in a family called Sudecus, and this snake is in that family and it's the most venomous of all the family members. So that really puts in perspective how dangerous the snake really is. There you go. Let's see if we can get come out a little bit. Woo hoo hoo, you see her fly out? Look at this beautiful plain black snake going through shed right now. And what's really crazy is you see this snake and you think it's a black racer or something like that, but no, this is one of the most toxic snakes on the planet and should be treated like a tie pan. Look at that, beautiful jet black snake, the Papuan black snake. And this snake will let you know when she's upset, she'll hiss at you, she'll open her mouth and go <sighs> So let's put it right back. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Right in there. Or you're gonna go back in the hide, but the hide's not in the enclosure. Let's get the hide in there. Right back inside the enclosure, nice and easy. Woo. All right, let's get that locked. That's a trippy looking snake. Found in Papua New Guinea in the swamps. They love to eat frogs and rats and small wading bird chicks. These snakes, you might have seen before, they're one of the most classic snakes when it comes to venomous reptiles on the planet. These are monocled cobras. I'm just gonna lift this up a little bit so you can check them out. There we go. Right, we'll actually see if we can get this hide out off the side. There you go. This is a big, beautiful monocled cobra right here. Her name's Big Bertha. And then the one underneath is an albino right there. And we're gonna see if we can actually pull out Big Bertha because she is quite the hooder and she'll give you a great display of her hood. Let's see. Nice and easy, baby. Look at that. Beautiful monocled cobra. And she's roughly around like six feet long. Check this out. I'm gonna show you why they call them a monocled cobra right now. There we go. Look at that, see that O? That is why they call them, hello, it's okay. That is why they call them a monocled, ooh. they call them the monocled cobra because that beautiful little O on the back of the hood looks like the single piece of glass that would be used for people with uneven sight. Such a beautiful snake, look, big snake too, real big snake. All right, let's get that beautiful monocled cobra right back inside because they were just sleeping, we wanna not disturb them too much. Here we go. Let's get a lock on that enclosure. Nice and secure. Next, oh, I love this guy, Childish Gambino. I don't think I have to pull him out. He's pretty much right there on display. This guy is gorgeous. He is a hybrid, naturally occurring hybrid from Africa between the Kaboom Viper and the Rhino Viper. 
So in the Congo, their environment overlaps, they find each other, and they make sweet, sweet love to make little hybrid babies. And you get this, the Gabino. So I named him Childish Gambino, because why not? I love the musician, and I love the snake. And then right here is another Bushmaster, my young male Bushmaster, same species, South American Bushmaster, La Chisis Muta. Some people say I pronounce it wrong, but <laughs> who pronounces it right? I mean, yeah, come on. Anyways, guys, this is the crown jewel. This is the last snake we're gonna be looking at. I got two of them, we'll just show you one. This is the Inland Taipan. This is drop for drop the most venomous snake on the planet. This snake is found in the middle of nowhere in Australia, but drop for drop, it can drop you. It can drop a hundred men with its venom. With a single drop of venom, a hundred men could be killed and, and thousands of mice. What's really interesting is not a single person has ever been killed by a taipan, which just shows you that even the most venomous snakes on the planet want nothing to do with us. And that's what you guys should take from every video that you watch. These snakes, you pull them out, show you the, show you how venomous they are, show you how beautiful they are. But every time I pull them out, they try to go in different directions. They try to hide, they try to get away. That's all a snake is. They just want to eat, survive, and live their life. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, seeing every single snake in this room. I mean, come on, look at all the snakes. I mean, come on. Come on over and slither when you're ready. All right, beautiful people. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, check us out on chandlerswildlife.com where you can get your merchandise, represent. You can, uh, you, anything you guys buy helps support the build out of this facility, helps buy uh, new glass when I make mistakes, you know? <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams, stay passionate about what you love, and just do what you want to do with your life. That's all it's about. Love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and big shout out to my boy Stone for hey, filming hey, today. Hey, 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 go check out Stone's World. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>